welcome back once again. Alright, for this tutorial, we will be talking about, let's see, my process for adding enemies and turn order usage for multiple enemies, as well as hidden enemies. Alright, so this is a request from a YouTube viewer of mine. So, basically I'll start off by setting things up before the session. All right, these are encounters that you know you're most likely going to have. Obviously, the, the players will take a turn or two, perhaps, and they'll want to fight something that you had no idea or you hadn't even thought about putting any of this type of enemy in there. But, you know, sometimes stuff happens. But anyways, this is for setting up beforehand. Now, I have a multitude of tokens of different enemies. Uh, I think I have some orcs in here, I'm not sure. At least, uh, I don't think they're tagged orc. So, searching anything from my library right now is probably going to be kind of rough. So, I'm just going to look at my art library. And... One of the Alright. I'm just gonna just gonna do a bunch of these guys. Alright, and then I'm just gonna drag them on drag one on here. Name. Um we'll just call you Bugbear One. Now there's two different ways I usually do it. If there's only like three or four enemies then I will label out their name, um, Bugbear One, Bugbear Two, Bugbear Three, Bugbear Four, or perhaps they have and they have a name. And in that case, I'll type out their name if they're special. But if they're not, I'll just do this. I won't show the nameplate or anything like that because I think it kind of breaks a little bit of immersion. But that's just me because if I see you know, random generic bugbear one as, as an enemy on the map, I'm like, eh, whatever. Um, however, if it does have a proper name, I could do that, you know, and then I would show nameplate. But I'm not going to do that. And for those of you that haven't really experimented, nameplate is basically this right here. It says bugbear one under it. It's useful for some cases. So, and if you want the players to see it, then click C. I mean, it's good for the GM to do it as well, uh, show nameplate without having the players see it. That's one way of keeping track with all of these uh, enemies. So, but since there's, I'm only going to be having four, I won't do it. So, I'll click Save Changes, Control C, Copy. Do it again and again. All right, and one of these guys is going to be hidden, but we'll get to that later. Right now, let's rename all of these. Double click, Bugbear 2. See, the reason why I named Bugbear 1 before copying was to save me all that time for, for naming it, basically. Now I just have to hit backspace and change the number instead of typing out Bugbear 3, Bugbear 4. So. I can just do this. Oh, this will be Bugbear 3. Bugbear 4. Alright. So, that's basically how I add multiple enemies. And managing them is a different story. One of them is going to be hidden. So, I go right click on one layer, GM layer. Alright, these guys are going to be over here. Let's say this, all right? And then we're going to go to our layer, GM info. And there we have it. It's, and if you had entered any health options, they would have been copied to the GM layer as well. But we're going to keep him right here. Alright, 
and we're going to just right click and add turn. Notice how his name is kind of doled out. This means that the player cannot see him in the turn order, but you can. It's always it's always a little nice little tip. All right. I'm just holding down shift and clicking each one of these. Then I right click and hit add turn. You notice how these have a different um they're they're what's the word? They're not as transparent. The more opaque, I think is the word. Alright. So, anyways, that's that. And what I do for my enemies is I roll if they're the same type of enemy. Like if these were all melee fighters, they're like they're using the same stat block for a monster. Let's say they have initiative of eight. I roll one initiative for all of them. All right, so it's going to be 14. So I just go up here, 14, 14, 14, 14. Oops, make sure to hit enter. If you don't hit enter, it won't uh, take my bad on that. There we go. Now this guy, I don't know his initiative, but we're going to roll his as well. All right, 17. So we're going to click on the player. It's got 17. Enter. And then I click on this little thing right here and sort numerically. All right. Cool. All right. Another thing that is useful if you don't have a token for it and you just want to represent it in the turn order we'll just say falling rock okay and we'll click add under, under the turn order settings make sure to click this and then this will pop up add custom item click add alright it's going to have an issue of, of 20 just type it out falling rock there we go so the falling rock goes I hit next hawk was so no so Sanoa goes over here. Let's say he goes over here. He doesn't. He's like, oh man, this room's empty. But this bugbear is very good at hiding, apparently. And he turns around. You say, hold up. You know, tell the player to hold. To slow it. To slow its roll. Go to GM Info Overlay. Right click on the hidden guy. And click Token Layer. And all of a sudden it pops up. And then your player's like, what? That wasn't there before. And you're like, yes, it was. Um, anyways, that's that. And that's pretty much just how I manage enemies. It's pretty simple um, and effective. All right, here's another thing. If I have, let's say, if you're playing fourth edition, or maybe even Pathfinder 3.5 or something like that, and they're just like really crappy enemies right and you have a bunch of them alright you just say bug say bugbears alright ah, quit it alright control C copy and just start pasting the crap out of it alright so I have a lot of bugbears Alright, uh, here's one way to do it. Drag one bugbear off the map. Alright, this is going to be your one bugbear that represents all of them. Okay? I know it can get kind of confusing for some, but this is just one way to do it. There's other ways I'm sure that you could figure stuff out on your own. So basically, I'll roll my initiative for this guy. Ooh, not good initiative. So all the bugbears will have a nine initiative. Okay. Um, that's all right. These are your generic bugbears, and so now we're going to add some more variety in there. All right, these bugbears are going to be called bugbears archer, archer, 
one. And there's going to be two of them. So I'll just control C, control V. Oh, come on. There we go. Sometimes you have to reselect it after you've opened up a different window. Double click on him. It's going to be Archer 2. Add turns. There we go. And we'll just, we'll just give them a number. All right. That's multiple enemies and multiple types of enemies. All right. This way is not too bad if you know if um, you don't want to do GM layer, and, but you have a lot of enemies, and but the players only see like one or two right now. Um, you can just have one name for all these enemies, and then the players can just ping which one they're attacking, like so, by holding down the left mouse button. So, that pretty much covers it of how I manage the, tr the turn order and dealing with multiple enemies. Alright, once again, if you guys haven't already, um, check out my D&D videos and Pathfinder videos if you're into that. I also have some Let's Plays, which I don't know if they're any good. But uh, you guys can check those out if you get bored or something. Anyways, I'll see y'all later.